Breaking news, Ukrainian military may be retreating from Bakhmut. Find out what could happen next in the epic battle against Russian forces. Explosions rock Russian fascist strongholds. Hundreds of Russian troops feared dead. Will Ukraine's spring offensive finally liberate Melitopol and sever Crimea's connection to Russia? Russia's navy in crisis, 18 ships destroyed, and ambitious plan in shambles. Enjoy watching and write your opinion in comments Crimea become Ukrainian? Ukraine conducts limited tactical withdrawal of troops from Bakhmut. The Institute for the Study of War, ISW, has reported that the Ukrainian military may be engaged in a limited tactical retreat in Bakhmut, although it is premature to assess their overall strategy with regard to a complete evacuation from the area. According to ISW analysts, recent geolocated footage of the destruction of the railway bridge in northeastern Bakhmut suggests that Ukrainian forces may be withdrawing from their positions on the eastern bank of the Bakhmutka River. The ISW also noted that the Wagner Group, a Russian military contractor, is making progress in northeastern Bakhmut and has advanced close to the Stupki railway station as of March 5th. While Ukrainian forces have not yet abandoned central Bakhmut, a Ukrainian serviceman indicated that Russian troops have yet to cross the Bakhmutka River into the city as of March 4th. Millbloggers affiliated with the Russian military have claimed that the Wagner Group has pushed Ukrainian troops back to the city's center. It is unclear whether Ukrainian forces intend to hold positions on the western bank of the Bakhmutka River. Despite the possibility of a gradual retreat, the ISW believes that the Ukrainian defense of Bakhmut remains strategically viable as long as they can avoid suffering excessive losses. The ISW also argues that Russian forces are unlikely to make significant territorial gains quickly when fighting in an urban environment, which typically favors defenders and allows them to inflict heavy casualties on advancing units. If Russian forces are unable to advance directly north or south of Bakhmut to the west of the city center, they will need to fight through the urban area to reach the Bakhmutka River's western bank, where the city center is located. However, Ukrainian forces may benefit from the city's urban terrain and the river's features if they can hold the line from Kromov, situated on Bakhmut's northwestern outskirts, south to the T0504 bakhmut kostyantinivka Highway. Russian millbloggers have observed that Ukrainian forces are capable of defending Kromov and are successfully repelling Russian attacks on Ivanovsk and the T0504 highway to the south. If Ukrainian troops hold their positions near Kromov and along the T0504, Russian forces may be forced to engage in urban warfare in central Bakhmut, leading to significant delays and losses and potentially accelerating the end of Russia's offensive. The urban warfare in Bakhmut could result in further depletion of Russia's already exhausted mixed forces, similar to the effects of Ukraine's fighting withdrawal from the Severodonetsk Lysikansk line in the summer of 2022, which effectively ended Russian offensive operations in Luhansk and Donetsk oblasts. Ukraine's army destroys two enemy military bases in Melitopol. Preliminary reports suggest that two locations housing Russian fascists have been destroyed and hundreds of Russian troops may have been killed in the process. The general staff of the armed forces will provide precise figures and complete information soon, according to Fedorov. On March 1st, he had reported explosions at the airfield in Russia-occupied Melitopol, jokingly attributing the mishap to a smoke break go wrong by Russian troops. Fedorov later mentioned that Russian forces were bringing military equipment and personnel to Melitopol, preparing to defend the city against an anticipated Ukrainian offensive. Military experts anticipate that the forthcoming Ukrainian offensive in the spring will aim to push into Zaporizhia Oblast with the goal of liberating the city of Melitopol. Experts predict that if Ukrainian forces reach the south coast of the oblast, they will sever the land bridge connecting Crimea to Russia via Ukrainian territory, leaving the Kerch Bridge as the sole means of access to the peninsula from Russia. Ukraine's Crimea has been under Russian military occupation since the war began over nine years ago in February 2014. 
The ongoing conflict in Ukraine has led to a critical need for Russia to reinforce its navy. Despite only involving the Black Sea Fleet and partly the Caspian Sea Flotilla, Russia has already suffered significant losses with 18 warships and auxiliary ships destroyed. In addition to this, the potential accession of Sweden and Finland into NATO has brought the Northern Fleet into the limelight as the most capable Russian naval force, despite historically being sidelined in terms of firepower and funding. As a result, the Kremlin has developed an ambitious plan to strengthen the Navy, although it appears to be only a theoretical concept. According to analysis from the Jamestown Foundation think tank, the actual efforts towards implementing this plan are inadequate. To commence, the conflict in Ukraine has forced Russia to prioritize the reinforcement of its Navy. Although only the Black Sea Fleet and partly the Caspian Sea Flotilla were involved in the conflict, Russia has lost 18 warships and auxiliary ships. Furthermore, Sweden and Finland's expressed interest in joining NATO has put the Northern Fleet in the spotlight as Russia's most capable naval force, even though it has historically received less funding and firepower. Consequently, the Kremlin has adopted an ambitious plan to strengthen its navy. Unfortunately, as Jamestown Foundation think tank analysis suggests, the plan remains mostly on paper as Russian shipbuilding enterprises have not extended their working hours despite the Kremlin's claims. Moreover, Russian authorities seem uninterested in the state-owned United Shipbuilding Corporation's hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue losses in 2022. Nevertheless, Russia aims to maintain its position as a global power and project power across all seas worldwide or at least maintain strategic parity with the United States. Instead of focusing on local projects, Russia's scattered resources are divided among numerous fleets and shipyards, resulting in little to no progress. The Admiral Kuznetsov aircraft carrier exemplifies this issue, as it is currently undergoing permanent repairs with repeatedly postponed deadlines. Equally noteworthy is the fact that Russia has plans to upgrade two of its nuclear-powered cruisers under Project 1144 Orlan, the flagship of the Northern Fleet, Pyotr Veliky, and the Admiral Lazarev Kirov class battlecruiser, which is also undergoing repairs at the Zvyazdaka shipyard. However, the repair schedule for the Admiral Lazarev battlecruiser is constantly being pushed back, and the prospects for its completion remain unclear. Until the work is finished, the modernization of the Pyotr Veliky Kirov class battlecruiser cannot begin. Despite these challenges, the Kremlin continues to prioritize naval development. 